Until now, we looked at some of the basics of Spring Boot. And before we go any further, I think it would be great if you can clearly separate what are the differences between Spring, Spring MVC and Spring Boot. I think having great clarity on that would be really wonderful. Spring Boot, Spring MVC and Spring. How do they compare? That's basically what we would want to answer in this specific step. Actually, by the end of this, you would understand that Spring, Spring MVC and Spring Boot have their own roles. They are not really competing for the same space. They solve really different problems and they solve them really, really well. So what's the core problem that Spring Framework solves? Think about it. The core problem Spring Framework solves is testability. If you don't define proper dependencies, then your applications are not testable. The most important feature is dependency injection. The core of Spring Framework is the IOC, inversion of control. Spring Framework takes control of all the beans and their dependencies. That's basically what the Spring Framework cares about. Spring Framework is all about defining your beans, putting your ad component, putting your ad service and things like that and also defining your dependencies at auto-wired and things like that. And also defining how to find your beans, component scan, for example. That's basically the core problem that Spring Framework solves. Spring Framework solves the problem of dependency injection. It helps you to build loosely coupled applications. Loosely coupled applications can be easily unit tested. If you look at this example, you see that welcome service instance is directly created in here. This is tightly coupled. The welcome controller is now tightly coupled to the welcome service. However, if you do dependency injection properly, then you would auto wire it in. You can use frameworks like Mockito and Mock Spring MVC to replace this service with a mock and unit test this controller. That's the main problem that Spring Framework solves. Other than that, Spring Framework also solves a few other problems like duplication, that's basically plumbing code. So if, let's say you are using JDBC, then you needed to write a lot of boilerplate code, try, catch, exception, and all that kind of stuff. That's not needed when you use any of the things that are based on the Spring Framework, Spring JDBC or Spring JMS. You don't really need to do that kind of stuff at all. The other thing which Spring Framework solved was providing good integration with other frameworks. So Spring had good integration with Hibernate for ORM, IBAT is for object mapping. It has good integration with JUnit and Mockito as well. Spring MVC is concerned with developing web applications. Spring MVC provides simple way of developing web applications. One of the great thing about Spring MVC is the separation of concerns. Dispatcher servlet is concerned with just the basic front controller part. There is a modal and view. There's a view resolver which is concerned just with resolving a view name to the physical view. With these kind of simple concepts, Spring MVC makes it very, very easy to develop your web applications as well as your RESTful services. Whether you are developing web applications or REST services with Spring Boot, internally you are using Spring MVC framework. That's the Spring Web MVC framework. Why do we need Spring Boot? That we have talked a lot about in this specific course. So in the last few steps, we saw the need for Spring Boot, right? We don't want to be configuring things like that. We are configuring view resolver. We are configuring dispatcher servlet. If we are using J Hibernate JPA, we need to configure data source, entity manager, and transaction manager, and a lot of that kind of stuff. Spring Boot says, okay, why do you need to do all this configuration? Can we really think different? The thinking of Spring Boot is, okay, this guy has added a Spring MVC jar. So can I configure some of the beans automatically? Can I configure a dispatcher servlet automatically for you? Can I configure a view resolver automatically for you? Can I configure a data source if a Hibernate jar is on the class path? I know he put Hibernate class in the class path because he wants to talk to a database. Why don't I automatically create a data source? So that's what Spring Boot does, the auto configuration part. It looks at frameworks which are available on the class path 
and provide automatic configuration. These startup projects are all built around well-known patterns. We will talk about Spring Boot Startup Web and Spring Boot Startup JPA in the next step. Other than starters, the important goals of Spring Boot to provide a few monitoring features. So it also provides starters like Spring Boot Starter Actuator, which is used for monitoring. So it enables monitoring for your application. And also it has starters to pick different embedded servlet containers. And it has starters for logging. So if you want to use Log4j, there's a separate logging for it as well. I hope this video helped you to understand the difference between Spring, Spring MVC and Spring Boot. In the next step, we would focus on starters.